Hi, Melder production may seem a bit complex. So in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to start using these marvelous tools easily and efficiently. It will be especially easy since all plugins have been made to look and work the same way. So after this video, you will sort of know them all. Obviously, the first thing we want to know is how to control a plugin. Melda plugins offer sliders, knobs, buttons, switches, graphs, XY pads, and other types of controls. They all look different, but share the same behavior when it comes to control. To change a parameter's value, left click on it and drag your mouse. To bring back a default value, use the right click. To modify a parameter with a better precision, apply one of the following, a mouse wheel, middle mouse button, arrow keys on a keyboard, or hold the control, command on Mac OS, when dragging. The home and end keys set a minimum and maximum parameters values correspondingly. Pressing the escape or backspace during dragging restores an initial value. Frequently, you want just to type a needed value. To do that, double left click on a parameter or left click holding shift. Enter your value in a pop-up window. For some parameters, such as frequency, this pop-up may contain additional elements, such as this piano roll, which lets you easily set frequency for a specific key. When setting a delay time, you can use the Alt plus left click combination. A plugin will measure a time between clicking and releasing and use it as a value. For controlling a graph, please watch the graphs tutorial. Now let's explore some panels found in all plugins. At the very top, we find the plugin's name and current version. Next is the edit button that takes us to the edit screen, which is available for plugins with easy and edit screens only. Then there is the random button. Clicking on it engages a smart randomization engine. From minor randomization, press and hold the control, command on Mac OS, and for a full one, press and hold an Alt key. Randomization is applied to where it makes sense. For example, it won't affect a preset selection or channel configuration. It also will ignore locked parameters. Next, to the right is the preset button. It opens a window with a preset browser. Here you can load, save, rename, replace, delete presets, sort them in alphabetical order or by favorites. Organize folders, etc. You can do pretty much everything that a preset manager does. The majority of button names are self-explanatory. However, if you're not sure about a button's purpose or any parameter really, you can employ a built-in help system. Hover your mouse pointer over a controller and press F1 on your computer keyboard. A pop-up window will tell you what the controller does. If the F1 button is used by another application, try Control plus F1 or Control plus H combination. Sometimes none of it works if a DAW is fighting the plugin. In these cases, just use one of the mini buttons with the question mark, which are all over the plugins. That means you can even avoid reading a manual, although it is a good idea. If you want to go through presets in a random order, press and hold Control, Command on Mac OS, and click on the preset button. or simply click on the Dice button here. The left and right arrows load the previous and next presets. Next to Bypass, there is the Panic button. It resets the plugin state, cuts the output signal, and re-reports the plugin's latency. Handy when the output level went out of control, or just anything that starts seeming weird. The Settings button opens a window with a plugin settings. Here, you activate, deactivate the plugin, define the user interface's look, and set some other parameters. Those who like customizing a plugin's interface will find quite a few options. 
including choosing colors and selecting different shapes for controllers. Clicking on the button with the house icon takes you to the support options where you can easily check for the updates, contact support, download a PDF documentation and much more. Finally, the main button with the question mark opens a help file that describes the standard parameters of plugins. Again, you can find such a button almost on every panel. There is a toolbar with some handy features in almost every plugin from Melda Production, usually located on the right. On the very top of it, we find the Up Sampling button. Here, you can set the sampling frequency on which the plugin runs, hence potentially increasing the audio quality. But before you use it, I would strongly advise understanding what it does. It's not a miraculous cure. There's a dedicated video tutorial about upsampling. You can also set a different value for normal and rendering states, so you can save CPU when working, but render the output with maximum quality if the upsampling helps. Second down is the channel mode button. Useful if you just want to process, say, left channel, or only mid-channel, or surround, for example. The default mode is left and right, hence stereo. There's a dedicated video tutorial about this one as well. The AGC button activates an automatic gain control. Frequently, processing a sound can lead to drastic volume changes that can mislead our judgment. This function can help to avoid that by keeping the loudness of the output similar to the loudness of the input. But note, this is a dynamic processor on its own. So if you use it in a compressor, for example, and there's a big change in the input signal level, these two will work against each other. There it may often be better to use the set button, which usually is available inside the AGC button, and which changes the main output gain parameter of the plugin instead of having a complex AGC module processing the output all the time. The limiter button turns on off the safety limiter that suppresses high level signals. Very handy solution when you want to experiment and keep your ears safe. It limits the signal from going over zero dBFS. The AH preset selector allows you to store eight different settings of the plugin except for the global settings, unsampling, channel mode, and the ones from the settings menu. You can use it, for example, if you are not sure which settings are the best, so you can easily compare them, or during a live performance, as these presets can be selected through the MIDI program change messages. Program 0 to 7 loads the presets from A to H, same as programs 8 to 15, and so on. The AB button switches between the current and previously selected AH presets. The Morph button opens a pop-up window with A, B, C and D presets located in the corners. By moving the position indicator, we can morph between these presets. Morphing is possible between parameters that can be automated or modulated only. The morphing itself cannot be automated. When finished, the plugin will store the current morphed settings into the selected AH preset. The Copy button copies the current settings into the system clipboard. The global parameters, such as the upsampling and channel mode, are ignored. You can paste the copied settings into another instance of the same plugin, or sometimes even a different plugin using the Paste button. You can also paste settings as text, for example, into an email you want to send to your friends and colleagues. They can just copy the text from the email and then use the paste button. There may be other copy and paste buttons in the plugins. This trick works for all of them. You can also save plugin settings as a file and may be easier and safer for emailing. For that, press and hold Control, Command on Mac OS, then click on the copy button. Then just select where you want to save the settings to. To load such settings, simply drag and drop the file into the plugin. If it doesn't work, hold Control Command on Mac OS 
and then click on the Paste button. Locate the file in a pop-up window. When pasting the settings, you can hold Shift to paste it in all AH presets at once. That can be a good workflow enhancer from time to time. The Undo button reverts the last change, whether you've changed a parameter or loaded a preset, for example. Correspondingly, the Redo puts it back. Sometimes you want to apply the plugin's processing with current settings to a bunch of files without opening them in a host program. This is usually called a batch processing. To do that, click on the WAV button and locate the files in the browser. You can also simply drag and drop the files onto the button. Important! The files will be overwritten, so make sure you make a backup copy first. MP3 and other non wav files will be saved as 32-bit floating-point WAV files. The GUI is structured into panels, often different looking for making it easier to use. Many of these panels contain the Collapse button, which can be used to minimize the panel. Use the same button to bring the panel back again. If the panel has a title, you can just double-click on that. The collapsing makes the GUI highly customizable, so you can make your workflow as quick as possible. The first panel I'd like to discuss is the meters and subsystems, and sure it can be collapsed like this. Here we find most of the meters the plugin has, the input, output, sidechain and others. For multiband plugins there are band meters, for compressors there is gain reduction and so on. The meters view has two modes. The first one is when meters are presented as bars, like right now. And the second one is when each meter is shown as a graph. To switch between the modes, click on this button. Here, you can select only the graphs you need. We can have it as a floating window if we click on the pop-up button. And now, we are free to put it wherever we like. On the second monitor, for example. Clicking on the pause button temporarily stops the metering and the enable button turns the whole metering system on-off. Switch it off if you want to save CPU resources. The utility panel is located at the bottom. Again, it can be collapsed. This is where the mighty modulators are located. A modulator is a very powerful feature that can bring movement into rather static sound. But not only that, there is a whole series of video tutorials about modulators, so make sure you check them out. They will change the way you look at audio processing and potentially drastically improve your workflow. To give you at least a slight glimpse, if I right-click on a modulator, select Learn, move a few parameters, click it again to stop the learning, and enable it, look what happens. And this is just an LFO. It can follow the input level, MIDI triggered envelopes, generate random sequences, and even detect pitch of the input signal. Then there's the lock button, which allows us to define parameters that are not going to be affected by the randomization or presets. Useful, for example, in a reverb when you want to browse the presets, but keep the dry wet intact. The last panel contains the multi-parameters, in other words, macros. Most plugins have at least a few of them. MPs actually serve many purposes. First, as the name suggests, you can use them to control multiple parameters at once. You can control them in much more complex ways too, like slow them down using the speed, or create a trigger that would do something on its own, and more. Using MPs, you can even design the entire GUIs in the plugins that feature easy screens. And finally, they serve as a link between a plugin's parameters and host's automation. Some plugins have thousands of parameters, so only the most important can be automated directly. But you can automate almost everything via MPs. Make sure you check the multi-parameter video tutorial series. 
it will change your workflow. That's about it. As you can see, even at a general level, these plugins offer a lot. Melder production plugins are famous for deep and comprehensive interface. Just the modulators and multi-parameters can blow your mind. However, Melder plugins are suitable to a user of any level. And here's why. When you open a plugin, there's a good chance you will see its Easy screen. This is the easiest level even a complete novice can comprehend. Simply select a preset on the left and move two, three knobs. That's how you've worked with most plugins so far, right? But maybe you'll feel it's not enough. Then just click on the Edit button to move to the next level. You can stay here forever if you want to. And one day you will feel extra creative or will want something special, unusual, even crazy. Then you can finally touch the modulators and multi-parameters. Then you'll become the master who can do just about anything he or she wants and it will be all about your creative ideas. So yes, there is quite a lot you need to know if you want to squeeze out every drop of juice out of these fruits. But it's a good feeling to know that all the tools you'll need are already here, isn't it? See you next time.